I mean, yeah. this reverend, Christian reverend brought it up. This is another thing that they attack Muslims on, on having, um, caring for multiple families. Yes, yes, yes. Polygamy. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, or as I call it, extending the family, right? Yeah. So what happens is there's a Christian pastor. You can find this. Uh, he wrote a book. Uh, because he's w in one part of the world where they have such an axis of women. Yeah, and even yeah. the president, he's giving incentives mm. for men. He's begging men. Okay, we have excess of women. By the year 2020, mm -hmm. we are going to have women in Ghana between the ages of 15 and 55. Three million from the statistics of 2010, Population and Housing Census 2010. Go and check. Mm -hmm. Between the ages of 15 and 55, we are going to have three million women mm -hmm. who will not find husbands, if each man married one wife. Tanzania has 30 million women, 20 million men. In February of this year, President John Magufuli was begging, literally begging the men to take two, three wives. Because there, there over 10 million women can't find husbands. And you know what that means? No. Okay. There will be increase in prostitution, mm -hmm. extramarital affairs. Mm -hmm. There will be increase in unwanted pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Then abortions, sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. And when there is excess women, they say the beautiful ones are here to be born, right? Mm -hmm. They see the beautiful ones, the old marriages will collapse because the men will leave them and go and take new wives. So when you say that polygamy is destabilizing, think about monogamy as well. I think your point is made. Thank you very much. Reverend Daniel Eshen has made a very strong point. These are Christians. These are Christians now espousing and calling for this because it goes back to many, much of the natural way. Yeah, so there, there have been, in, in history, there's like Anabaptist uh, Christians in uh, German communities. Can, can, one, can one of you, you know how, how our, our friend, our friend Joe Rogan, Yes. I think he's the guy, you know, Joe, when you're looking for the guy, for the statistic or somebody's name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the guy <laughs> looks it up. Can you look up, I'm curious to know, president calls for... Uh, um, the president calls for uh, poly uh, polygyny in his country. Uh, yes. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we, we haven't heard this, uh, <laughs> the, the, this feature of uh, yeah. podcasting. <laughs> yes, please, uh, Can you look that up? Out. I mean, it's not just... Uh, it's a solution now. I'm yeah, saying find something better. Oh, it's yeah. not something that's obligatory, but it's a, it's a solution to a growing problem. And they're having... And the, the president, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's... What is it? That's another one. See, this is not even the one that I'm thinking. This is another, this is, this is another one. <laughs> if you look, up, you look it up, you find it. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. We have, you have a, a small community in the world, has their worldview, and now you're trying to do, they're doing dawah for the rest of us. Yes. Is that? No, you're absolutely right. In fact, most world religions um, uh, openly endorse uh, these things. Obviously, it's the churches or, and or the religious communities of those religions which sometimes suppress those things for legalistic reasons. But certainly the Haredi Jewish community uh, they believe in uh, uh, they believe in polygamy. A, a large portion of those things. If you look at their rulings, a lot of their clerics, even to this day in Israel, they're talking about poly polygamy as uh, polygyny is mm. something which is very much um, practiced, which is men marrying more than one woman. And uh, the Anabaptists, I remember even after the whole Martin Luther experience uh, in the 16th, 17th centuries, uh, and the Protestant Reformation, that there emerged a group called the Anabaptist Christians, and they, I think, they made it actually obligatory obligatory for a man to have at least two wives um, and they use biblical verses to uh, to justify their, their their belief and so on I mean obviously m most of the world religions have this but um, th the point is this once again we go back to our premise our premise is that different things are treated in different ways and uh, if we're saying that the the physical and physiological and emotional infrastructure of a man is differentiated almost in its entirety from that of a woman then certainly it's um, prescriptions regarding marriage and divorce should be slightly different uh, in that regard otherwise there will be uh, universality where it's uh, inappropriate for it to be mm -hmm. so uh, obviously a man having more than one wife ha comes with a lot of responsibility yes. and it comes with a lot of restriction as well from an Islamic yes. uh, Quranic perspective and can only be done and uh, you know in certain conditions I mean if certain uh, you know obviously um, uh, precautions are taken and agreements are made yeah. and, and so on but it's, it is a solution, and um, it, it, it is a solution which has helped humanity um, he, aforetime, historically, and continues to do so. Yes. Uh, and in fact, there's a growing problem in many societies where, where, where we travel. We go to Africa, we go to Asia, we go to all these places, and we find that there's a, there's a problem with like divorce sisters that people, for some reason, for some strange reason, uh, they become outcasted in their community. 
-hmm. even though really and truly from a practical experience perspective, they have more experience if you think about it, right? Yeah. They've been through something and they, they have more experience than say uh, a person who's not been married before. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, pres sorry, the president's called Magofoli. That's the one. Yes. Yeah. John Magofoli. Uh, he said, I am not forcing you, but just encouraging you to marry two or more wives to reduce on women staying without husbands. There you have it. So th they didn't realize it. it's a social issue. Of uh, John Magofoli. Where John Magofoli. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, he's, yeah. He's telling him to, he's not forcing you, but he's encouraging. So the thing is, it's, 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 it's a natural thing. If you look at sociological trends, it makes a lot of sense for a man sometimes to marry more than one. We have to revive this sunnah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, <laughs> maybe maybe in another country since now, it's now illegal here I, in this country. I, 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 no. I only brought that up is to uh, for the empowering aspect of because you you we 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 brought up uh, connecting it back to the natural way. I mean, of course, the yes. number one natural way. I mean, the number one thing is that pure monotheism. That's that thing that every human being. I mean, it's a part of that nature that connect to worship the Creator, not the creation. It's just part of the human nature. But these other things that mm. uh, Muslims feel. Uh, depowered they feel like you know when you talk about so many of these things they feel like how can my religion everybody's against it but then when you bring up s a lot of these issues yeah. um this is uh, this is amazing like it just it, it brings people back to like wow I, I didn't know this for instance like people get teased about alcohol for instance mm. you know and then a uh, recent study for instance concludes that no amount of alcohol is good for the human being but the previous study we all heard that yes, because it was good. now a gimmick what they had is faulty they had the the alcohol companies funding they were funding yes uh, i'm sorry yeah the alcohol f companies were funding these studies yeah. uh, that promoted alcohol yes the yes. new study comes out it's in the last is lancet no amount of alcohol is good and actually who reports that one in uh one person every 10 seconds dies from alcohol consumption wow. so now that muslims at the party right somewhere maybe he's not supposed to be or even he's in the place where work party and now he's you know being offered this alcohol mm -hmm. and everybody's saying come on a glass of wine a day it's no good how can your religion deny something that's you know good for your health you follow me or for instance uh we talked about fasting right people make fun of you like how can you starve yourself what's yes. going on but now we're quoting these scientific facts they're all coming to the forefront right anything in the deen is the natural way there's nothing that the creator told us to do even though they're making fun of us one day mm. now the joke's on you like how can you fast all day now you're saying man this is for longevity for life for yes. you know all of these things coming to the forefront now but we're not uh, doing it for the for the health for the, the because the yes. science is coming out we're doing it because we trust in our creator but now we get to reap both absolutely and you know the quran says does he not know what he created and he is the most subtle you know the most all aware he is all knowing you yani, know so uh, why waste all of our time you know trying to find sociological and psychological solutions when all of it has been sent to us through the, the final messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which all his all, all his actions been approved stamp of approval from the creator the all knowing one the all knowing i mean that that's just the, the amazing so these i just bring up we brought up this point this point because this this is empowering i mean this yeah, just 100%. you know this is just more more and more evidence and evidence upon the quran that we have you know with the most evidence that this is indeed from the creator and muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was like jesus moses abraham all the other messenger mm -hmm. he was a messenger sent as a mercy to mankind calling us out of the love to submit our will to the creator and get to jannah paradise yeah well uh eddie jazakum for this oh, yeah. beautiful podcast thank you i mean there's a lot of gems uh, you're talking about gems i think there's uh, you know uh, golf uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of gold now that they can read from this uh, from this uh, podcast and especially when you're talking about health etc so i think um it's very important for muslims you know to to have that awareness to have that as you put it uh, quite succinctly nutritional integrity yeah.